My name is Joyce, and I'm 28 years old. I currently work as a software developer in Queens, a city that feels like a world away from where I grew up. The journey to independence wasn't easy, but it all started with my escape from my mother's controlling grasp. To understand where I am now, it's important to know where I came from. I grew up in a small town near San Jose, living under the strict rule of my mother, Lauren. My childhood was far from the carefree experience most kids have. From the time I could remember, my mother controlled every part of my life. There was no such thing as pocket money, no sleepovers with friends, and definitely no room for disobedience. If I did something she didn't approve of, the punishment was harsh. Sometimes, she would withhold dinner. Other times, she would take away the few things I loved. The freedom I saw other kids enjoying felt like something completely out of reach for me. Even though I did well in school, my mother was always there, pushing me toward the choices she thought were best for me. She even decided which college I would attend, insisting it was the perfect fit for my future, despite what I wanted. I dreamed of going to school in a lively city, but she insisted I attend a smaller college close to home. It felt like she would never let me out from under her control, no matter how much I wanted to break free. College, however, was where I first caught a glimpse of the freedom I craved. For the first time, I was able to make some decisions on my own. And after graduation, I grabbed the chance to move to Queens. I got a job at a well-known tech company, and for the first time in my life, I felt like I was living for myself. I found a small but cozy apartment not too far from downtown. It wasn't much, but it was mine, and that little space felt like a fortress of independence. Life in Queens was a refreshing change. I took delight in the simplest things. Walking to work, choosing my own groceries, and deciding my own schedule. Those small freedoms meant the world to me after years of being under my mother's thumb. For the first few months, everything felt perfect. But then strange things started happening. It was subtle, at first random phone calls with no one on the other end, odd messages that didn't make sense. Nothing concrete, but enough to make me uneasy. I tried to brush it off, telling myself I was just being paranoid after years of overcontrol. Then one evening, there was a knock on my door. It was my neighbor, Mr. Paul. He's a graphic designer, a bit older than me, with a kind and gentle demeanor. He's always been polite whenever we crossed paths. Joyce, can I talk to you for a minute? He asked, his voice carrying a tone of concern. Sure, Mr. Paul. What's going on? I replied, feeling a small knot of anxiety form in my stomach. I replied, doing my best to hide the nervousness creeping into my voice. Mr. Paul looked genuinely worried. I just saw someone acting suspiciously near your apartment, he said, his brow furrowed. I thought you should know. They might be trying to get inside. My heart started pounding. I hadn't noticed anything strange myself, but the thought of someone trying to break in made my stomach churn. Are you sure? I asked, trying to sound calm. It could have been someone just passing by. I'm positive, he insisted, his tone firm. I think you should check it out. With my mind racing, I unlocked my apartment door and stepped inside. At first glance, everything seemed normal, but my anxiety was through the roof. Just as I was about to take a deep breath and relax, something caught my eye a purse sitting on the table. It wasn't mine. I knew that instantly. It was a sleek, expensive designer purse, the kind I would never buy for myself. It looked so out of place in my apartment. Panic gripped me as I quickly thought about calling the police, but then something stopped me. Inside the purse, I noticed a folded note. My hands trembled as I reached for it, my heart racing even faster. Slowly, I unfolded the note, and my breath caught in my throat as I read the words. I'm sorry, Joyce. I had to come. I've been watching you. I needed to know if you were okay. It was from my mother. I stared at the note in disbelief. My mother, Lauren, had been in my apartment. My emotions flipped from shock to anger in an instant. How had she found me here? How long had she been watching me? I felt a surge of betrayal course through me. My mind was swirling with questions when I remembered the purse. It had been a gift from her, one of the many gifts she had sent me over the years. At the time, I hadn't thought much of it, but now it all made sense. She must have hidden a tracking device inside the purse. All this time, she had been monitoring my every move without my knowledge. 
I felt sick. I turned to Mr. Paul, who had followed me inside. His face showed nothing but sympathy as he realized what had happened. My mother. I began, my voice shaky. She's been tracking me. She must have put a device in this purse. I can't believe she would invade my privacy like this. Mr. Paul's expression softened, and he gently placed a hand on my shoulder. I'm so sorry, Joyce. That's a huge violation of your trust. You don't deserve this. Tears welled up in my eyes, but I blinked them away. I need to confront her, I said, my voice gaining strength despite the turmoil I felt inside. She has no right to do this to me. In that moment, I knew I had to act quickly. This wasn't just a minor breach of trust. It was a pivotal moment. I had spent years trying to escape my mother's control, and now I was faced with the ultimate test. Would I let her continue to manipulate me, or would I finally stand up for myself and take full control of my life? A mixture of fear and determination filled me as I started making plans to confront her. I knew it wouldn't be easy. Facing my mother would be one of the hardest things I had ever done, but I had no choice. If I wanted to be truly free, I had to break away from her influence once and for all. The freedom I had worked so hard to build in Queens suddenly felt like it was slipping away, but I wasn't going to let that happen. This was my life now, and I needed to protect it. The discovery of the hidden tracking device had shaken me to my core, but it also strengthened my resolve. This was my chance to take control of my future, no more living in her shadow. With every passing moment, my anger and resolve grew stronger. I had escaped her once, and I was determined to do it again, this time for good. I couldn't believe Lauren had crossed such a line. My life in Queens was supposed to be my escape, my chance to finally breathe freely, far away from her overbearing control. But now, with her tracking me, it was clear that I was still tied to her in ways I hadn't even realized. Her presence felt like a cold shadow, reminding me that no matter how far I ran, she was always pulling the strings. The next day, I gathered all my courage and made my way to the address she had listed. She wasn't staying in some grand place, just a small, run-down apartment not far from where I had grown up. It wasn't luxurious, but it was enough for her. As I approached the door, my heart pounded in my chest. Every step felt heavy, burdened by years of frustration and pent-up anger. When I finally knocked, the silence that followed felt like an eternity. Then, after what seemed like forever, the door creaked open. Joyce, she said softly, her voice carrying a mix of surprise and guilt. I wasn't expecting you. I stepped inside, barely able to contain my anger. You weren't expecting me? I said, my voice sharp. You've been tracking me with a hidden device, and now you're surprised? Her face paled, and she shifted uncomfortably. I just wanted to make sure you were safe, she stammered. I didn't mean to. Didn't mean to invade my privacy? I cut her off, my voice trembling with fury. You've been following my every move, Mom. This isn't about safety. This is about control. You've never let me live my own life. Her eyes filled with tears, but she remained defensive. I've done it all for you, she insisted, her voice shaky. I was just trying to keep you close, to help you. Help me? I nearly shouted, my frustration boiling over. By suffocating me? By deciding everything for me? I'm 28, mom. I'm an adult. I need to live my own life. Tears began streaming down her face, but the walls she had built around herself remained firm. I'm sorry, Joyce, she whispered. I didn't know how to let go. I've made mistakes, but I didn't know how to fix them. I stared at her, my emotions swirling in a confusing mix of pity and frustration. You're not just apologizing for tracking me, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. You need to understand how deep your control has gone. It's not just this one thing, it's everything. And that's when she revealed something I hadn't expected. I've been struggling financially, she confessed, her voice barely audible. I wanted to ask you for help, but I didn't know how. Her words hit me like a punch in the gut. You were going to ask me for money after spying on me? I asked, disbelief and anger swirling inside me. Lauren nodded, her eyes filled with shame. I've been in debt, 
she admitted, her voice barely above a whisper. I've spent more than I should have, and I thought maybe if I kept an eye on you, I could figure out a way to fix things. A cold rage built inside me. You've been spying on me to figure out how to get money from me? I said, my voice icy. That's despicable. You've manipulated and controlled me for years, and now you want to use your invasion of my privacy to solve your own problems. She tried to reach out to me, her hands trembling. Joyce, please, she begged. I didn't mean for things to get this way. I took a step back, feeling the weight of everything crashing down on me. All the years of control, all the time she had made me feel small and powerless, it was all coming to a head now. I wanted to scream, to yell, to make her understand the damage she had done. But instead, all I could feel was a deep, aching sadness. This isn't just about the money, Mom. I said quietly, my voice strained. It's about the way you've treated me, the way you've never let me be my own person. You don't understand what you've done to me. Lauren stood there, tears streaming down her face, but I could see that the defensive wall she had always kept up was starting to crumble. For the first time, I saw her not as the controlling figure who had dominated my life, but as someone who was deeply flawed and lost in her own way. Yet, despite that, I knew I couldn't let her continue to manipulate me. I need space, I said finally, my voice firm. I need to figure out my life without you constantly hovering over me. I can't keep living like this. She nodded, her face crumpled with regret, but I could tell she didn't know how to fix what she had broken. And maybe she never would. As I walked out of that apartment, a weight lifted off my shoulders. It wasn't easy, but I knew this was the first real step toward reclaiming my life. For the first time in a long time, I felt like I was finally breaking free from the grip she had held on me for so many years. This wasn't just about privacy or money, it was about my future, and I was ready to take control of it once and for all. I'm sorry. My mother's words felt hollow, like she was saying them out of habit, not because she truly meant them. I shook my head, feeling the weight of the years of manipulation pressing down on me. I can't do this anymore, Mom. I said firmly, my voice trembling with emotion. I can't keep letting you control my life, even from a distance. Leaving her apartment, a flood of emotions overwhelmed me sadness, anger, and a strong sense of determination. I knew deep down that the only way to truly reclaim my life was to cut all ties with her. This wasn't just about the tracking device or her attempt to ask for money. It was about breaking free from years of emotional control, from a childhood and adulthood shaped by her manipulations. As soon as I got back to my apartment, I sprang into action. I knew that if I didn't make changes now, I would never break free from her hold. The first thing I did was get a new phone. I didn't trust that my current number or device hadn't been compromised in some way. I also installed additional security measures throughout my apartment, new locks, cameras, anything that could prevent another invasion of my privacy. I wasn't taking any chances. I then made a bigger decision. It was time to leave this apartment and find a new place to live, somewhere far away from her reach. I started looking for a new place that would give me the fresh start I needed, but it didn't end there. I contacted a lawyer to begin the process of legally separating myself from her. I needed to take every step necessary to make sure she had no control over any part of my life, even legally. Each of these steps filled me with both relief and heartache. I had longed for this freedom for so many years, but now that I was finally taking the steps to claim it, the cost was higher than I'd expected. It wasn't just about moving on from my mother's control, it was about rebuilding myself. I had to rediscover who I was outside of her influence, to find my own sense of autonomy and self-worth. As I began packing up my belongings and preparing for the move, Mr. Paul became a surprising source of support. He offered to help with the logistics and, more importantly, he provided a kind ear during some of my toughest days. We spent more time together, and his steady presence became a small comfort in the middle of the chaos I was navigating. I hadn't expected to rely on him, but his kindness made everything a little more bearable. However, the battle was far from over. The more I distanced myself from Lauren, the more I realized just how deeply her manipulation had affected me. It wasn't just about what she had done recently. 
Her influence had shaped the way I viewed relationships and trust in general. I was beginning to see how her actions had controlled every aspect of my life, from the smallest decisions to the biggest moments. Confronting my mother was only the first step. I knew I had a long journey of self-discovery and healing ahead of me. It was daunting, but at the same time, I knew it was necessary. For years, I had been living in the shadow of her control, and now I was finally stepping out of it. The struggle for my independence had only just begun, and I had to prepare myself for the challenges that lay ahead. In the days following my confrontation with Lauren, everything became a blur of activity and emotions. I finally moved into a new apartment, far from the small town near San Jose, where I had spent my childhood. My new place felt like a fresh start. It was modern and bright, with big windows that let in streams of natural light, a stark contrast to the cramped spaces I had known before. It was the kind of place where I could begin to feel like I had control over my own life, where I could breathe freely without the weight of my past pressing down on me. But even as I settled into my new surroundings, the emotional burden of everything that had happened still lingered. Moving into this beautiful apartment was a huge step forward, but the scars from years of manipulation didn't just vanish. I knew it would take time to heal. The path to independence wasn't just about changing my location, it was about changing my mindset, letting go of the emotional chains that had bound me for so long. With each passing day, I felt a little stronger, a little more sure of myself. I was finally carving out my own life, on my own terms. And even though the road ahead was still filled with challenges, I knew that I had taken the first step toward true freedom. This was the beginning of my journey, and for the first time in a long time, I felt like I was in control of my own story. I had lived in cramped, small spaces before, but this new apartment felt like a whole new world. As I unpacked my belongings, I was filled with a strange mix of excitement and apprehension. There was something soothing about the process of unpacking, giving me the chance to reflect on everything I had been through. But as I pulled out each item from the boxes, I was reminded of how deeply Lauren had intruded into every corner of my life. Her control had seeped into everything, even the smallest parts of who I was. The legal separation from my mother was a huge step forward. It was both liberating and painful. On one hand, it freed me from the emotional chains that had held me captive for so long. But on the other, it was the final cut in our already complicated and strained relationship. The lawyer assured me it was a standard procedure, but to me, it felt like closing a chapter one had struggled with for years. This was the definitive end I hadn't been able to bring myself to make before. Throughout this difficult time, Mr. Paul was always there. His presence was a quiet comfort in my life. He helped me with a move and offered me a steady shoulder to lean on when the emotions became too heavy to bear alone. We'd often spend the evenings in my new apartment, talking about everything and nothing. His calm, kind nature was such a welcome contrast to the turmoil I had been through. In those moments, I was reminded that not everyone in my life wanted to control me. One evening, as we sat in the cozy living room of my new apartment, Mr. Paul brought up a topic I had been avoiding. You've been through a lot lately, he said gently. How are you really holding up? I took a moment to glance around the room. The empty spaces reminded me of all the things I had left behind, both physical and emotional. It's been a whirlwind, I admitted. I feel like I'm finally starting to breathe again, but it's hard. It's hard to let go of everything that happened. He nodded, his expression full of understanding. It's a lot to process, but you're doing really well. Look at this new place. You're making changes and taking control of your life. His words struck a chord with me. It was such a relief to talk to someone who wasn't trying to manipulate or control me. Mr. Paul's support had been more meaningful than I could have ever anticipated. He helped me see that even amidst all the upheaval, there was a positive side to all of it. This was my fresh start. As the weeks passed, I began settling into a routine in my new apartment. I threw myself into personal projects I had neglected for years, things that made me happy and allowed me to finally express myself without fear of judgment or control. I also began to reconnect with old friends, people I had lost touch with during the years of isolation under my mother's influence. 
Their support and understanding were a welcome comfort during this time of transition. Despite all the positive steps I was taking, the shadow of my past still lingered. I would occasionally receive messages from Lauren, pleading for forgiveness or asking for updates about my life. Each time, I felt a pang of guilt, but I knew responding to her would only pull me back into the chaos I had fought so hard to escape. I had to stay strong and remember that cutting ties with her was the best thing for my future, no matter how difficult it was. One day, as I was preparing dinner in my apartment, Mr. Paul came over to help. We were casually chatting about my new job when, out of nowhere, he asked, Do you ever think about what's next for you? Beyond just getting away from all of this. I paused, the question catching me off guard. I hadn't thought much beyond escaping my mother's control. I'm still figuring that out, I admitted. I've been so focused on just getting away from my mother and her control that I haven't really thought about what comes after. Mr. Paul smiled softly. That's understandable. But now that you've taken such a huge step, you've got all the freedom to think about what you want for your future. His words stayed with me long after that conversation. I had spent so much of my life just trying to break free, trying to get out from under the weight of Lauren's control, that I had never truly allowed myself to dream about what came next. Now, for the first time, I was in a position to do that. I knew the road ahead wouldn't be easy. There would be bumps, and there would be moments when I questioned everything. But I was finally in control of my own life, and that was something worth celebrating. The new apartment wasn't just a place to live, it was a symbol of everything I had worked for, of the independence I had fought so hard to achieve. As I stood in my new space, Looking out at the city beyond, I felt a sense of calm wash over me. I was finally free to live my life on my own terms. The future was wide open, and for the first time in a long time, I was excited to see where it would take me. I hadn't really thought much about what I wanted my life to look like now. Mr. Paul smiled gently and said, It might be worth thinking about what you want for yourself, not just what you're trying to escape. You've made such a big step, so what do you see for your future? His words struck a chord with me. I realized I had been so focused on getting away from my past that I hadn't spent any time thinking about what I wanted moving forward. The idea of building a future based on my own choices was both exciting and a little scary. That evening, sitting alone in my new apartment, I started to think about the future. I thought about the kind of life I wanted to create not just one without my mother's control, but one that was positive and meaningful. It felt like a new kind of freedom, one that came with its own challenges but also the chance for growth. I was beginning to understand that reclaiming my life meant more than just leaving my past behind it was about building something new for myself. And while I knew the journey wasn't over, I felt a sense of hope and possibility that I hadn't felt in a long time. As the weeks turned into months, I began to feel cautiously optimistic. My new apartment was starting to feel like home, and I had settled into a routine. I had been focusing on my personal growth and reconnecting with old friends, but there was still one thing left unfinished. My final confrontation with Lauren. One afternoon, as I was enjoying a quiet cup of coffee, I got another message from her. It was similar to the others asking for forgiveness and hinting at her financial struggles. I stared at the message, feeling a mix of anger and sadness. It was clear she still wanted to reach out, but I had made up my mind. I couldn't let her back into my life. By this time, Mr. Paul had become more than just a supportive neighbor. He was now a true friend. We had regular conversations, and I found myself opening up to him in ways I hadn't expected. One evening, while we were cooking dinner together, I decided to tell him about the message. I got another message from Lauren today, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. She's still asking for money and saying she's sorry. I don't know what to do. Mr. Paul looked up from the stove, concern written on his face. You've already done so much to protect yourself. Maybe it's time to think about what's best for your own peace of mind. I nodded, feeling a mix of relief and hesitation. I've been thinking about that. I know I need to completely let go, but part of me still feels responsible. He placed a hand on my shoulder gently. It's normal to feel that way, but remember, You've done all you can. Sometimes letting go is the hardest, but also the most important step. The next day, I woke up knowing that I had made my decision. 
I made up my mind and wrote a final letter to Lauren, clearly setting my boundaries. In the letter, I told her that I wouldn't respond to her messages anymore and that any attempts to contact me would be ignored. It was a firm but respectful goodbye. As I sealed the envelope, I felt a mix of sadness and relief. It marked the end of a difficult chapter in my life, but it also showed my commitment to moving forward without letting the past weigh me down. Ten days later, I had another heartfelt conversation with Mr. Paul. We were sitting in the park, enjoying the cool autumn breeze. He was quietly watching the leaves change colors when he turned to me with a thoughtful look. Joyce, you've been through so much, and I'm really proud of how far you've come, he said softly. But I've also noticed something else there's a light in you now that wasn't there before. You seem more at peace. I smiled, feeling a warmth inside that I hadn't felt in a long time. Thank you. It's been a long journey, but I think I'm finally starting to find my way. I'm learning to focus on what I want, not just what I've been running from. Mr. Paul smiled back, his eyes full of kindness. It's wonderful to see you like this. And I'm here for you, whatever you need. His words stayed with me long after we said goodbye. I felt a new sense of hope and determination. For the first time in years, I was beginning to picture a future that was truly mine, built on my own dreams and goals. As the year came to an end, I took some time to think about all the changes I had made. My life was still a work in progress, but I no longer felt trapped by my past or by my mother's control. I was learning to make my own decisions and embrace the possibilities ahead of me. One evening, while sitting by my apartment window, watching the city lights, I thought about everything I had gone through. I felt both proud and relieved to know I had come out stronger on the other side. There was still some uncertainty about the future, but there was also the exciting promise of new beginnings. In the end, breaking free from my mother's influence wasn't just about gaining independence, it was about finding my own path and having the courage to walk it. As I looked toward the future, I felt at peace knowing that, for the first time in a long while, I was truly in control of my own life.